Button Smash. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Button Smash. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> Everybody in there, out there, this is the only video game podcast that doesn't give you that weird controller when you come over to play. You know that one where your friend hands you when the triggers don't quite work? So when you're like, where did this come from? How did you even get this? It's I'm got a turbo and a slow button. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> I am your host for the evening, Sergio, a.k.a. Bad Coyote. Tonight, we are joined by a very special guest dropping into the Smash Arena. We've got Echo 31, Chad Michael Collins. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Chad, welcome to the show, and thanks for joining us today. A pleasure to be here, guys. Let's uh, let's geek out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And as always, uh, this is your Button Smash cast coming fresh out the gulag, both some of us. <laughs> We've got Doc Chris. I am here. We've got TV's Casey. Yo. We got Jay's Mac. Good evening, everybody. We got Booster Greg. I still can't get COD to work on my computer, no matter what I do. So I'm just going <laughs> to cry in a corner. It's terrible. Buy, buy it its own solid state drive. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting close to that. Very close. Uh, now, before we continue any further, we would like our audience to get to know Chad a little bit better. So, uh, Chad, we know you as the badass Alex from Modern Warfare. What's there not to love about Alex? You know what I mean? <laughs> For those you know. And uh, you've been in numerous TV shows and movies, but uh, we want to talk to you first about uh, Chad Michael Collins, the gamer. Ah, uh, the gamer. Yeah. I've been a gamer much longer than I've been an actor. And uh, I'm probably a better gamer than I am an actor as well. So, uh <laughs> That's to be debated, but yeah, I grew up on, um, I grew up on Nintendo, man, the OG NES. I was an eighties kid. So when I wasn't watching, you know, GI Joe cartoons and whatever else I was, you know, getting busy with Super Mario Brothers and um, Final Fantasy and Legend of Zelda and everything else. And that just took off through Super Nintendo. And um, I kind of started getting out of consoles and into PC gaming. And, and once I did that, I've never really, I've always owned a console, but I've always preferred PC gaming ever since then. And, you know, playing everything under the sun. I'm a, I'm a big fantasy nerd. So fantasy RPGs and stuff like that have always been, been my jam. And uh, now I'm, I'm getting down with Call of Duty. And it's funny you made a joke about the gulag because I feel like that's where I spend most of my time. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, sometimes my COD stream, the title is just Gulag Warriors. Like that, <laughs> that's it's all it is. That lets you know what's kind of ahead. And uh, so you're talking about uh, uh, PC gaming. With PC gaming, uh, you also stream on Twitch. So what got you into streaming? Uh, we can thank quarantine for that, quite honestly. Um, I, I've always been like a, the story mode guy, the campaign guy. And of course, when, when our game dropped, I went through the, the campaign immediately. And I never really had much interest in multiplayer. I knew it was wildly popular and stuff like that. But with quarantine, I was like, well, I'm going to check this out and see what it's all about. And I started to have a lot of fun. And, you know, I had some time on my hands since the entertainment industry just basically shut down. So I taught myself uh, how to Twitch stream, which was, um, let's just call it a lot of trial and error. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> school, man, is hard. And I, I tried to put myself through it. Just, you know, I thought it would be really cool to get to know and meet uh, the gamers, the fans, the people who love Call of Duty out there and just play with them and, and uh, you know, pick up all the tips and tricks and hacks from them just because... You know, I was new to that arena, so it was kind of nice for them to just kind of lead me by the hand and show me how to actually play and, and, and to improve and stuff like that. So we have a good time. You know, we built, we built, a, we have a really fun community over on Twitch. It's nice, you know, it's equal parts Q&A and people asking questions about the process because, you know, there's not a lot of behind the scenes stuff out there, how these games are made and that they take three and a half, sometimes more years and they're insanely expensive. And uh, so it's been really fun to just kind of pull back the curtains for people who love these games to just discover more about the process, but then also just get in the game itself. And, um, you know, anyway, if we come across like a cutscene or something that I remember filming, you know, I get to share that story and anecdotes about that, how that day was on set. So we have a blast. We have, we have a lot of, uh, of fun and uh, I'm really, really almost grateful to quarantine because I don't think I ever would have picked that up if, if, it, if I didn't have so much downtime. So, and now it's something I look forward to every week. It, that's awesome. I mean, th- there's there's so much to streaming. And then what we've also noticed, too, is that you have charity streams. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I've been uh, lucky to be a part of uh, quite a few charity streams, you know, uh, everything in, in 
support of uh, COVID relief efforts to Black Lives Matters charities, uh, veterans charities. We just did one for a veteran uh, veterans charity called um, AFIT Salute and OSD, which is all about getting uh, video games to veterans, you know, and, and offering support services and stuff like that. And uh, uh, Jeff Leach, um, he's, uh, he's a really big gamer. He's a big time streamer. He does the voice of Ghost in our Modern Warfare game. And uh, I've hopped on some of his streams and charity streams and stuff like that. So it's cool. You can, you know, lend, you can lend this, it lends itself to doing all sorts of fun stuff, whether that's fan engagement or gamer engagement. Uh, raising money for charity. I just think it's an awesome platform and, uh, and a really cool thing for people to, to put out there. That's awesome. I didn't know the guy who, who played Ghost also streamed as well, and you guys had a stream together because uh, my, my buddy, whose real name is Alex, plays as your character, okay. and I play as <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> Dude, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's so funny. Every time he's just like, I'm Alex. I'm like, yes, I know. <laughs> and I play as, as, as Ghost. I, I, I love, love the, uh, the character in, uh, in that guy's voice. I've been playing COD for God knows how long. Yeah. Uh, but but on your streams now, we know as streamers and even even some YouTubers as well, there are clipable moments, favorite moments. Do you have any favorite moments or or things that happened on your stream? Um, I'll tell you what, man. It's a. I always make the joke that no one comes to my streams for my gaming skills. You know, it's it's more of a, it's a clown show, man. We have a lot of fun, and uh, and and to be able to answer those questions and to engage with the fans in that way, it's it's always a really really good time. But um, I think the best streams uh, are when I play with the fans and the gamers and my audience and we do shipping and we'll just do shipping for like a couple of hours. Like that is just, it's just like entertainment gold right there. Just running around and shipping. Shipment uh, is such <laughs> is such a show. <laughs> it's Indeed. such. Oh my god, I, I love it too because whenever like a new weapon drops, you just hit right into like shoot the ship and you can level everything right. up. But oh my gosh, so I was I was checking out uh, uh, your streams of the week and you guys, your whole team and yourself just dropped into shipment and I was like, wow, this is yeah. nuts, absolute man. And there's some good content coming out of it. People love playing with you and you know, but being there with your character and just the chaos of just constant gunfire, like not yeah. even be able to to spawn in shipment. <laughs> Great because you don't you know you don't realize what a bad player I am because it shit me you're just expected to die and respawn within the span of three seconds. It's <laughs> a perfect death simulator at that point, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, it's smoke and mirrors, man. It's smoke and mirrors. <laughs> now, uh, in regards to to you acting uh, as Alex in COD, um, I wanted to know if you weren't Alex, is there another character you'd want to? Because not only I don't know if people know that you did the voice, but you're also acting. You were the motion capture for him as well. Yeah. So what I wanted to know was, uh, is there another character in Call of Duty and maybe in Forever Not Just Modern Warfare that you were like, oh, what if I kind of want to play that guy? Yeah, I, I played the original trilogy and I, I loved it. Like everybody else, you know, loved it. And uh, it's just a really beloved trilogy in, in, the, in the Call of Duty universe. And um, man, it's hard not to, you know, love ghosts. It's hard not to love Soap and, and everybody else too. You know, Captain Price, of course. So I, I don't know. I, I think I was pretty lucky in that I got to originate uh, a brand new character. And, you know, Barry Paul Sloan, my co-star in, in Modern Warfare, he had a hard job. You know, he was, he was reinventing Captain Price. And that's, you know how that goes with fans and gamers <laughs> yeah. and everything else. It's like, you don't touch the old stuff, right? And so he, I just thought he did a brilliant job of, of paying, you know, tribute to the previous Captain Price, everybody knew and loved, and then putting his own creative stamp on it and telling it in a new way. Uh, so I feel like he had pressure, you know, as Alex originating a character, it was a lot less pressure for me. I got to create that with the director and the writer. And um, luckily, you know, the fans and everybody seemed to really dig the character. So um, I don't know, man, it's, 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 Alex has really grown on me just for that reason. But um, you, you really can't go wrong with anybody with Task Force 141. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I would have loved the chance to have reinvented any one of those characters as much as I loved, you know, originating Alex for everyone. Nice. Nice. Oh, how about that for a non-answer? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you got it, I mean, you're the guy, so why wouldn't you love playing it? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, well, well, so while you're uh, playing Alex, is there any, like, breakout moment, something that you can recall? Uh, you mean during filming, the filming process? Yes. Yeah. Um, I worked a lot with you know, most of the cast, but I worked hand in hand with uh, Claudia Dumit, who, who played Farah. And, you know, our storyline kind of took off uh, with me, Alex, 
kind of almost going rogue during the campaign and, and siding with the freedom fighters, Farah and, and her people. And um, I really enjoyed working on set with her. Everybody that we had on this cast are top notch, really talented actors, but we had so much fun. And I know that some of the content is brutal and the storylines are, are pretty rough and, and, and raw, but you know, at, before action and after cut, we were just kids in the candy store, man. We we're making a video game, you know, some of us for the very first time. And we, we were all of that generation. We grew up with video games. So we couldn't have been more excited, enthusiastic, and, and just having fun. Every every day on set was a total pleasure. All the guys at Infinity Ward and Activision, just the coolest people. They just love making games, you know. And six months before launch, so these guys are working for years on these games. Six months before launch, they're pulling 80 hours a week, uh, you know, for months on end, working through the weekends. And you don't do that unless you love video games, man. So that that enthusiasm they have is just always there. Taylor Kurosaki and the whole gang at Infinity Ward. Uh, it was just a, it was one of the best acting experiences I've ever had. We, we had a tremendous amount of fun. And the excitement about this game was was through the roof. And it's, it's cool to see kind of the numbers on the back end reflecting how much other people dug this game. Yeah, it's one of the biggest games like on the planet. This mm -hmm. Undoubtedly on the planet. I mean, I, I don't care if anybody, if anybody plays or not. It's just huge. Like, Call of Duty is one of those titles that everybody knows and everybody looks forward to as well. So that being said, uh, Call of Duty Cold War, um, you know, <laughs> I see that head nod with the tight lip. Don't know if you... <laughs> don't worry. It. Not gonna this not... podcast, we yeah. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Stick to the script. <laughs> yeah, not, not going to ask you if you know or not know anything. That's not it's not this kind of show here. Uh, everyone's a little, everyone saw the announcement. Everyone's pretty jazzed. Uh, were, were, were you playing when the event dropped? Uh, sorry, what event? Uh, event? So, so in Call of yeah. Duty, uh, Cold War, basically uh, in the war zone, they unleashed the trailer. But first, you had to go around the map and and find an NPC and do a couple different things, and oh, then the trailer I, dropped. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that, but no, I, I, I couldn't log on and, and play. But uh, I did watch the, the extended trailer and some of the, the teaser stuff as well. It's, uh, it's a totally independent universe, obviously. Modern Warfare, different developer, different publisher. Well, Activision's a publisher, but I, I don't know if it's a Treyarch game or, or one of the other Call of Duty uh, game developers and whatever. So, I, dude, I barely knew anything about our game, man. Like, I, <laughs> I auditioned for this game, and I had no idea what it was. Things were revealed to me, you know, as needed. I just had a, a really cool person on Instagram screen grab, like there's going to be new season five Alex skins, apparently, that you can buy or unlock or whatever. Like, I had no idea about that. So I'm the wrong guy to pump for information. Dude. You think I know? <laughs> Trust me, it's, it's way above my pay grade. It has been for the last two years. Definitely. So yeah, I'll say along those lines. Um, so obviously you were brought into the project to be the voice of Alex and, and, and do the acting job. Um, but uh, did you have to wait for the game to come out before you got your hands on it? Or were you able to get at it a little bit to kind of see the iteration along the way? Uh, we, were, we were shown a lot of the finished, you know, cut scenes and cinematic mm -hmm. stuff that we, we filmed a lot of. Um, I didn't have a chance to play anything before it was released, but, mm -hmm. you know, I downloaded it that night at midnight <laughs> like everybody else and played through the weekend and everything else. So I, I really love that. I really love kind of, getting to it when when the fans and the gamers yeah. get to it i really love that mutual excitement and it was just it's exciting for me to see the final product in real time along with everybody else so it's um yeah i didn't get any real sneak peeks i'm sure i could have <laughs> but i really felt like <laughs> let me just take this in with everybody else i want to be yeah. part of the zeitgeist right now spec that the midnight release gotta wait for yes, yes. hold now for it i was uh, actually up in san francisco doing a doing some interviews to promote the game and stuff and I had like hotel Wi-Fi and, you know, midnight came and I was like, yeah, we'll just download this. It should take like an hour or so. No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't going to put a dent in that game, as everybody knows. So I was like, okay, lesson learned. I'll do it when I get home back at my PC. <laughs> Yeah, the infamous gigage. <laughs> I, I recently got one of my buddies uh, to, to play uh, Warzone. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll just download it when I come from Like, no, 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 start it before you leave for work. And then when you come back, he's like, no, nah, I'll just. And he comes back, he's like, why is it so big? I'm like, I told you. I told you it's huge. Why? Why don't you listen to me? He's like, I don't know. What game does this? Oh, you know, man. I was, it, it was unbelievable, man, because I got to see, you know, the similar stuff we were filming before, you know, it dropped and, and started being on commercials and, and everything was released in the trailers on YouTube and everything else. And 
I was blown away how cinematic it was. I mean, it really looked gorgeous. And like, I know, I know one of the biggest gripes is the download size and stuff, but like, I still boot up this game and I'm just blown away at how hyper real it looks. Just the, the, the attention to detail, the, the, the resolution, the shadows, like everything about it is really just such a gorgeous game. And I know it's, it's, it's easy for gamers to find things that are wrong and complain <laughs> about, but you know, 200 gigs, I feel like is a small price to pay for something that looks that like absolutely real and gorgeous. Yeah, I, I, got I, a never, I never knew I wanted to play a game where you could see every pore on the character's face, <laughs> every follicle of their mustache. Right. Yeah, I got a buddy of mine who uh, just came from console gaming to PC, built his first PC, high-end parts, RTX, 2080, everything. And uh, he, he FaceTimed me to set everything up to get COD going. And uh, he was like, all right, man, just get me through all the Mac settings. Turn it on, hopped into Warzone. He was like, oh, my God, this is so – it's like an HD. What is this? He goes, where are all these textures? <laughs> it was like a whole new who were uh, – copyright. It was like a whole new thing. <laughs> it was like a whole it's the new- scene from 2001. My God, it's full of stars. <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts. He's just like, they do, do move in it's just single tear coming down his face but yeah the high fidelity of the game is nuts they really have done something here now uh what was your reaction when you first saw your character fully rendered what was that like i mean i was i was thrilled man i thought it, it like alex just looked so cool way cooler than i am in real life you know and uh <laughs> just, you know he had you know the arm sleeve tattoos and that was um um we had some Navy SEAL consultants and, and uh, two guys named Steve and Mitch who were very, very high level Navy SEALs. And they were on set with us a lot, um, helping us fine tune and just get the tactical stuff down every day of filming. And um, Steve actually has those arm sleeve tattoos and they stuck them on my character, which is cool. And the mustache was a surprise, obviously. And I, yeah. just, I love that. So, I, I mean, I was thrilled, man. I, I, I just absolutely loved it. I thought they did a really great, a really great job. And um, I was just as excited as everybody else when I saw the final version. Nice, so you're like, that's me, but like an Elseworlds, like more like crazy looking. <laughs> I'm, I'm better, I'm a cooler me. <laughs> Which man's me? I'm a poor man's me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, that mustache, ooh, those sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever uh have you ever done anything because i know um the woman who plays uh mara goes to like gamestop and does like signings have you ever like went to a gamestop you know before before all this when the game dropped uh, and be like hey you know i'm just signing posters for fans and stuff like that have you ever showed up not really i've ever i remember um the weekend that it dropped i did go into a gamestop because i want to see a lot of the physical promos and stuff they had on all the stores and everything and it was like right here in like burbank california me and my buddy were in there and um <laughs> they were i read like the employees my buddy was like yeah this guy's in the game and whatever else like nah nice no, you know and then i'm like hey dude, dude, it's cool man you don't have to tell them like whatever else they're not going to believe you anyway <laughs> so um no i i i had to i was supposed to go do a couple of like launch events and stuff at game spots and, and things like that but i wasn't able to attend because of the schedule conflicts but uh it's been a lot of fun man doing conventions and just the twitch stuff I really, really, really love engaging with the gamers and the fans. And, you know, I think the one thing that I learned was not a lot of motion capture voice actors, you know, who are in video games. A lot of them don't often play video games themselves. It's almost kind of a weird rarity. You know, it's like it's like hiring an actor to to, to play a superhero, but he's never read a comic in his life. Right. So there's a big disconnect. There's like how well can you actually engage the fans if you don't have a love for these things? Uh, as well so i i've i love to be able to kind of just geek out with people that way because i you know i've always been a gamer and and they love it too so i really it's cool it was really it's it's always it's been really cool to hear that you know there's not a lot of video game actors who actually play the games or make themselves available to to stream with and interact with and whatever and i was really surprised you know by that but it's been a hell of a lot of fun and, and fans have been nothing but nothing but great I think that's refreshing to hear. Um, do you ever like mess with anybody if you queue up in them and like you're dropping in some of your own voice lines, things like that? Like, you know, just to I, see if anybody notices. I, yeah. Before I um, <laughs> knew how to like tweak settings and stuff, you know, if you're all mic'd up, you're going to hear stuff from the opposing teams and whatever. And after a few matches, listening to the opposing team, like, no, 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 I got to turn this off. Like, this is too much. <laughs> this is much the other end. Like you know, everything from poor losers to you know, just profanity laced twelve-year-old like, talking. <laughs> oh, like, I, I got to speak to the voice with my own party. Like the I wise choice. I can't listen to it, but it is fun. You know, we go in the streams, we play some Warzone, and 
you know, whether you're marking a contract or marking a, a drop drop point or whatever, you know, Alex will have his voiceover line, which I did another like thousand voiceover lines just for the war zone. Add-on. <laughs> and so like I'm talking in the headset, wow. my party, and then they're hearing me in the game and it's the same thing. So it's, it's a bit of a weird experience for, <laughs> for people, you know, for me, it's just like, yeah. That guy sounds like me. He's- I would mess with people so hard, just like do different call outs and <laughs> you know, just do a little marks and gear over here, <laughs> over here. Right. And this uh, is why you don't have that power. So yeah. That's why. yeah. <laughs> you were never fated for such things. It, it, it's, it'd be even better when, when, like, when like all the voice actors get together and you're all just like doing that kind of stuff. Like uh, I forget, I forget his name from, uh, from Overwatch, uh, the guy who plays uh, McCree. His, his name escapes me, but when the oh, game, I know you're talking about, yeah, yeah, when the game for first first came out, he'd be like, "It's high new and hits his his ulti, and everyone would just kind of hide, like, "Oh no, what's going on?" And we were like, "Wait a minute, what? It's not it's not happening." <laughs> just a bit of fun for him, Matt Mercer. Matt, yes, yeah. thanks for Hub. <laughs> oh my gosh, but um, let, let's see here. So so along with streaming and gaming, uh, what would you say, Chad Michael Collins, is your favorite game of all time? Ooh, um, big question. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> we uh, gave you the softballs first. Now it's just like the big difficult question. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Um, make me choose between my babies. <laughs> uh, I, I've been a big Warcraft guy. Um, hey. Pretty much the first expansion uh, back in like the early mid 2000s. I've always loved Warcraft. I don't have as much time to play it now like I used to, but it's something that I've always loved. I, I messed around with Classic just to get back to the, the, the OG, the vanilla. Um, yes, I, Mister. I went back and rebeat uh, the old Baldur's Gate PC. Oh, oh nice! Wow, Ooh. one of the classics. Impossibly hard. I use cheat codes. I'm sorry, man. I <laughs> 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 okay, uh, <laughs> but I, I like Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past is still one of my all-time favorite uh, uh, games. Contra. If we're going Nintendo, OG Contra, hands down, favorite side scroller of all time. Um, yeah, that's those. Those are those are top. I know I was supposed to pick one. I think I gave you four or five. So <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, let's see here. All right, we're gonna take a short break, and we'll be right back with uh, Chad Michael Collins after this. Going. With a cape, no, anything. Yeah. Look, cape, cape is always crazy. <laughs> cape is always crazy. Look, there are clowns walking the streets right now. Right you now. <laughs> there is no one dressed in a cake. Rogue Wave Podcast, the frequency for all things pop culture and the disruptors behind it. Streaming every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on Facebook.com slash Rogue Wave Podcast and available immediately following the live stream wherever major podcasts can be found. Hey, hey, and welcome back to the Button Smash Video Game Podcast with a very special guest, Chad Michael Collins. So, uh, Chad, let's, let's get into, into some more stuff. Let's get into some uh, little, little nerddom. So, uh, we recently learned about your hobby, playing tabletop games. And uh, we talked about you streaming WoW. So, uh, let's get into the RPG realm a little bit. So, uh, would you say it's a lot more fun for you to DM, be a dungeon master, or a player? Ooh, good question. Um, I got to be honest. It's nice to just go to the office and leave your work there. So being a player is super fun. Uh, you know, DMing takes a lot more work, but it's kind of work that I enjoy, you know, and it's all the extra hours of prep and like kind of memorizing that manual and the campaign stuff. I really, I really love it. You know, in a time where people in the entertainment industry have been forced to not be creative just because there's nothing to really create. These give me a really fun outlet to, you know, if I don't like something about the campaign, I'll homebrew my own stuff. You know, I'll homebrew an NPC or an encounter or, you know, come up with my own maps and, and stuff like that or take a storyline in a way that I, I, I thought would, would serve the players better. So I really love DMing. Um, I got to be honest, at one time I was having I was involved in five games a week. Oh, my God. Wow. 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 <laughs> Pull back and we finished some of those campaigns. Thank God, because that's not a sustainable. Uh, <laughs> at all. Uh, but I, I love them both equally. I really, really do. And, you know, it, one lends itself to another. The more you play, the better DM you're going to be. The more you DM, the better player you're going to be. So mm. it's, um, it's, it's a good education both ways. So along those lines, um, what do you like better? Do you like the role-playing aspect or do you like the action aspect? Combat! 
All the combat. <laughs> All the combat. I, I, I love the combat. Um, however, I do play uh, a paladin in our ongoing uh, Rise of Tiamat campaign. So, you know, he's the face. He's got the high charisma score, so he's doing a lot of the talking. I'm also such a nerd that I'm like always the group note taker. So it works, you know, I do the role play stuff and it, and it is it is quite fun. And uh, I'm doing uh, Curse of Strahd for two different uh, groups right now. And that's some really interesting role play. I just did a f- ancient fortune teller the other night and uh, <laughs> a drunk priest the time before. So it, it's all fun, man. I love all the elements, the exploration, the role play and the combat of D&D. But I just think combat is just like chess and it's just super stimulating for me. I really, really love putting my players through that hell. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so right now you're playing a paladin. Uh, is that your go-to class or do you have love for some of the other it, it is bad. Uh, first Warcraft character, Paladin. Um, D&D, favorite D&D character, Paladin. Uh, I'm, <laughs> nice. Dude, I'm a nerd for knights. I it's just a love... man who lives by yeah. lawful good. I know. I, I really... What is what is up with me and justice, man? I don't get <laughs> but I've always... I mean, I grew up in the Lord of the, Lord of the Rings trilogy, man. And I, I read, you know, Bernard Cornwell, who's a great historical fiction writer. He did, like, an Arthur, Arthur trilogies and... Um, a great trilogy that's been turned into a TV show called The Last Kingdom on the BBC. And so all that stuff, the medieval warfare stuff, the night stuff, I've always been, you know, such a nerd for that stuff. So the Paladin, Paladin is my, my, go, my go-to class. Once a Pally, always a Pally. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm going back. So what other, uh, what other, so obviously play Dungeons and Dragons, World of Warcraft. What are some of your other go-to RPGs? Um, I don't play a ton of other you know tabletop stuff i've been playing magic the gathering since nice i mean oh, way wow. since way before it was cool yeah. uh, let's just put it <laughs> it's it's a game i always come back to you know every year yeah. two years i'll come back and i'll get really into the sets that are out and we'll go and you know do the friday night magic playing some tournament at the local card stores and stuff like that me and me and friends will go in in a box and we'll have our own like booster draft and just play uh, I've always loved Magic. I think this MTG Arena app that they have yeah. is amazing. I love that. Just digital. Because under my bed, right? I, I, I've had a, amassed a collection and sold so many collections over the year. And like I, now I've amassed a new collection. And I'm like, the digital stuff is like my jam right now. I know it's yeah. not as <laughs> sexy as like having the, the comic and the pages or the, the physical cards. But like space becomes an issue yeah. when you're a nerd. Let so, me tell you something. <laughs> as, as somebody... Is, as somebody who loves playing with a blue deck, having the yeah. computer resolve in a stack for you mm-hmm. yes. is just a blessing. Mm-hmm. I, oh. I will always say the best way to learn any trading card game is to just play the computer game of it or the yes. app or whatever. Because you cannot cheat. You cannot break the rule. You just right. go as is. And if you have a question on a card, just see if you can play it in a match real quick. And then that'll yeah. just tell you immediately. It's so good. It's same thing, man. Same thing with D and D. You know, we've moved every all the games over. You know, we were we were doing in person. I wanted people to have an old school tabletop experience, so I bought the minis and I would print the maps and everything else. It's slower. It's tedious. We moved everything to Roll Twenty. It's so streamlined, man. Yeah. It helps me with the with the rules. It helps me just learn and grow. Um, it's there's something to be said for it. You know, it's nice to get together in person, but uh, the digital stuff can really help you. Have you uh, have you given faster. tabletop simulator a swing? No, no. Oh, man. Listen, I was completely unaware of this until I found out that two of my friends have designed their own games. One of them a card game, the other one like a Risk-style board game. Uh-huh. It's, it's a complete 3D environment that lets you import all kinds of assets and stuff. You can pretty much do whatever you want. If it can be played on a table, you can play it in this simulator on Steam. Oh, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I haven't heard and of it's that. Like, it's like 20 bucks. <laughs> I, actually, I just had this conversation with some friends of mine as well. Um, we're playing, we're playing Vampires of the Masquerade, and um, we were discussing tabletop simulator. And it's either, yeah, I think it's like twenty bucks, or it's like a for like sixty bucks, you get four licenses or something along those lines. Uh, but it looks very customizable uh, and has VR support, which is really cool, so that you can oh, really wow. feel like you're sitting at a table. No, oh, mm-hmm. very cool, man. And there's a button to flip the table, <laughs> <laughs> as you need, obviously. Yeah, you never know when it could come in handy. <laughs> so magic the gathering gotta throw this at you what colors do you usually play what's your go-to colors um i'm a big fan of green 
I'm a big fan of green with a splash of white. I'll be honest with you. That's the paladin touch right there. It's yeah. the knights. It's the angels. But then, you know, I like the big beasties, man. I'm just, yeah. just classic MTG. Just give me the biggest creatures. Let me try to find a way to get on the board and just destroy you with a gigantic ape. X <laughs> with trample. Haste. Yes, trample. Yeah. The woiks. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm so bad at the game. I always build white decks that do life gain, and then they never yeah. actually do any damage. Uh, so I've been to I, I've been to a few drafts where I I didn't necessarily win, but I made my opponents very mad at me because they yes. were I was not losing very quickly. Right, it's the way to go. Not a bad strategy. No. Drag it out until they quit. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, these are my rules. <laughs> yeah. yeah, perfect. Black and white exalted over here for me all the way. Ooh. I love exalted. Ooh. That's like the way to go. Literally every exalted card you have as long as one creature attacks that gets plus one for each of those on the field yeah. so literally everything my land all of that i'm just like i look at my opponent and i just go you and i get a one one <laughs> monster and it becomes like an eight eight or a nine nine real quick yeah so good i i've messed around with those decks in that set but those are really fun too yeah i think that's like what i love about the more recent magic sets is it used to be like, you know, traditionally these colors would play well together and you never did that. You never mix black and white ever, but now yeah. it's just kind of like, let's embrace the black and white, you know, the evil holy zealots and stuff like that. I really yes. think it's a lot of fun. I, I just noticed for, for Warcraft, I didn't ask you a uh, Horde Alliance. Lions, man. Oh, oh yeah. one of those, one of those guys, eh? Those guys, eh? <laughs> Serge's skin is crawling right now. <laughs> <laughs> what we I, have I, here is obviously a man who appreciates that the Horde are, in fact, the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> and where's that Casey eject know, where button that we that got button? there? Where's that eject button? I hit it somewhere. The eject button for Casey, right into the pits. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, like I started off as this alliance, uh, and then uh, you know I knew better, and then I went over, <laughs> I went over to the horde. <laughs> joking, joking, joking. Yeah. We're, we're not, we're not Warcraft elites here. But uh, well, what was your favorite uh, iteration of WoW? My favorite expansion of all time was probably Wrath of the Lich King. Nice. Uh, that was always my favorite, where it got into like more of the Norse mythology and, and, and the frozen wastelands and stuff like that. I that one always stood out to me. I just uh, I love that one probably the most. Yeah. How much, uh, how much time do you say you put into a... I learned that there was a, that macro, you know, slash something, and it tells you how many total hours and days you put into the game. I think I did that once in 2009, and I was like, I will never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the... insurmountable. Yeah. I'm burdened with knowledge. <laughs> the amount of days you put into it, like literal days, calendar days, you're like, I don't need to know that. Uh, that that is let's just pretend that doesn't that's not how it's going here damn <laughs> how uh, how was it going back to classic did you feel uh, like it was like nostalgic enough or do you feel like the quality of life improvements were oh my god uh, i had a great time it was so fun to bop around those classic zones and everything else like that but i'm like oh my, like what a tedious grind i just could not <laughs> i give up on wow like i got my paladin because like in regular WoW, you can be a paladin. I like to be the tank, you know, the protector. Mm -hmm. I like to be the yeah. guy that does damage. And, um, you know, you can't level like that in, in WoW Classic. It's like This bubble gotta... just ain't cutting it. Oh, my God. But you can <laughs> in the regular ongoing WoW stuff. Like, it's just as easy to level as a tank as it is any other spec, right? But, man, in Classic, it was so tedious. Like, every... I'd go fight like one bandit in the desert and it would just be a one minute fight every single time with me just in like a common mob. I'm like, oh, one down, only 20 more to go. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, tank spec. So bad. Um, but I did love it. I, it. It was such a great walk down memory lane for sure. It's a hard life to be being a tank spec in a classic. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you got to have like, like a squad with you. You got to have some dedicated friends. Uh, when I went oh, back to God. classic, I had some people, but uh, I was like, I got a real DPS. I can't do tank. Yeah, dude. It's, yeah. it's not for the weak. Oof. Oh man, but but I, I like revisiting some of the older instances, like uh, going back to like the like the, the, the Scarlet Monastery back in the beginning. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I remember this, like doing this for the, for the first time. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like classic dead mines. Like, yeah, just like classic dead mines. Like it was always kind of one of my favorite dungeons to run. It just reminded me of the Goonies with like the pirate ship. <laughs> yeah, with the I think oh, I think it's oh. based on because the pirate ship and everything yeah. and the pirate mm -hmm. theme. 
Yeah, it's it's so funny too when you get all like the, the pirate uh, outfits and, and armor and stuff, and you your fans yeah. just like start role playing as pirates just to be dumb because <laughs> that's right. what you do <laughs> on a Saturday night while everybody else is out doing fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it oh was, man, it was cool. You, just, you forgot how like hard that game used to be. You know? Yeah, like, you were like you're you're like level 15, 16, 17, whatever, and you're in dead mines, and it's like you will die. Like you will die a lot. You know, you know, and the ongoing wow you know you're just gonna rip through that stuff you probably rip through with two players instead of five now you kind of take it for granted how the degree like skill you actually needed to have to complete something like that oh definitely oh, yeah. uh did you have any plans to get into shadowlands shadow oh that's the new expansion coming out. yeah the new uh, expansion I'll, I'll probably buy it eventually you know i buy i bought every single expansion whether i can actually get to them or not and <laughs> play them that might or not so I'm, you know i'm a wow guy and uh i probably i probably will be until the end of the days Nice. Did nice. you get any of the collector's edition to get any of the cool trinkets and stuff? Uh, not really. Not really. What um, what is this last expansion called? Battle for Azeroth. Yeah. 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 So I, I was playing that for a while and mixing that up with classic and, and stuff like that and and everything. And I've got a couple of voice actor friends who did some voices for the game. Oh, great. awesome! Nice. Yeah. So um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really really cool. But you know, wow, man. Unless you're unless you're going to commit that time. <laughs> you know it's just you know casual is it's you know you, i can't do the 40 hours a week anymore <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't do like the end game raids and stuff which you know breaks my heart but uh you know that's that's the way to play that game to get the most out of it for sure you had a buddy who was, who was brand new when uh to wow when battle for azeroth came out and he dabbled back in the day not too long at all maybe like two hours and then he loved how cinematic battle, of, battle for azeroth was right at the beginning like when you get to like the new shore you see all the ships and the and like all the character voices he goes okay i see why people like this game holy crap yeah. and he ended up playing a lot more than i did he was right. like hey you're getting on later after work you're getting on you're getting on i'm like jeez dude. again all right Glad you're here now. That's that's all that matters. Our entire friendship is based on the silly game now. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about it. Oh, I love that. Dude, do you have any games like that, uh, uh, Chad, where you and your friends like buddy up, like anyone who's been like a lifelong friend, and you're like, hey, let, let's get into this game. Do you have any of that now? I got to be honest, playing Call of Duty, I've reconnected like buddies from my hometown. Like, we, you know, we get the headsets on, we, we mess around, and, and it's – it's people I haven't seen in years, you know, but they love Call of Duty. And and now that I'm I'm playing it too, it's such a great way to reconnect with people. And I'm making tons of new friends um, in that way. But uh, yeah, yeah, I've got some good friends here in LA who are gamers and, and we were picking up WoW around Christmas time where we all had a lot of downtime and uh, kind of going and exploring, you know, the new expansion and even messing around on Classic a little bit and stuff like that. So I, that's how I, I, I used to love to do it. You know, I just, I love the group aspect of the thing it's fun to go solo and just explore the world and watch it unfold as you you know gain levels and explore new places but man playing with your friends is really is really cool and i think that you know that's that's why that's what clicked for me when i started playing call of duty multiplayer I'm like i get it now this yeah. is a lot of fun <laughs> and and I, it's such a cool fun way to connect with your friends and um you know i've, I've always preferred that that about wow back in the day yeah well, one of my fondest memories from wow is me and one of my uh, college buddies, we would be in the desert of Tenaris, and we're both rogues. I was combat spec, and he was stealth spec. So I would just be sitting there, not stealth, and he would be like, like looping around me, waiting for someone to gank us. And then I would go invisible. He would come out. He would do his massive damage. Then I would come out, and I would do my massive damage, and we would just <laughs> rinse, lather, repeat until people just stopped coming to, towards us. It was yeah, so see, much what, fun. What, what we're talking about here is basically that scene in Office Space where they beat up the copy machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's so good. But yeah, like, like, like COD, uh, it really has become like the hangout now, especially with, with, with Warzone, uh, you know, like getting a season after season after season. Like I got buddies now who are just like, even right now has a reliable, they're like, hey, you getting on afterwards? Are we dropping in? Let's go. Because it, it becomes such like an addicting thing to be, to get that first like player spot, to get that for their first team, that number one, you know, especially, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, because I've seen you play multiplayer. Do you, do you drop into Warzone a lot? Or because I see you yeah. both play with your fans in multi -A. So is there a right. good mix of multi and war zone or just? Totally. I, I, it's a lot easier to play with more uh, of the fans or people who come to my stream in multiplayer. You know, you can get bigger squads and, and stuff like that. But I have started to do that with them, uh, playing Warzone, Plunder, that sort of thing, too, because it, it allows itself to more conversation. You know, there's, it's less heated, like constant dying, respawning, whatever else. You can 
kind of take your time exploring the map, getting your contracts, doing whatever. And it's nice to have kind of a more engaging conversation with them uh, during those downtime moments. So, uh, but I love them both. I think the Warzone, Warzone add-on is just genius. Like I have so much fun playing that. I'm not very good, but <laughs> I do love it. I really, really thought they they knocked it out of the park with that. Yeah, and uh, let's see here. So, how, how many how many wins would you say you have in, in Warzone? Oh, that's easy because uh, I can count it on one hand. Uh, oh no, <laughs> two or three. Oh. And and trust me, I had very little to do with those wins. It was, it was more of a testament <laughs> to my my friends who were actually good at the game. Um, you know, because I I was not there in the end when the victory thing flapped in the screen. Yeah. I was long dead and rotting in the gulag. Hey, some, hey sometimes you that. get that one friend who just you hop on their back for the carry. Yep. You know, that's all. Yeah. It's all yeah. it is. Even I had that swarm has got a World Series ring. <laughs> I feel like I've spent, I've learned I've learned you know it's I, I grew up playing a lot of sports and it's like know your role you know what are you on the yeah. basketball team are you the guy that plays defense and rebounds like are you the guy are you the three point shooter so in war zone my role is clearly defined I am the driver and I am the medic so when someone goes down I'm like I got you <laughs> nice you nice drive around like I got it. And that's so clutch too. Like you, you need the getaway guy. You need the guy who's like, cause I, I've been on teams where people are like not reviving and I'm just like, revive, I'm over here. Revive, come on. What are you doing? And they're like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. <laughs> like, what, what's going on? So sorry, that's really bro, clutch. My yeah. KD ratio just can't take me helping you. right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I play with that one person. who's just like, I thought I could kill that entire team while you were all down. It's like, what? It's not a strategy. Not, it's not. Um, <laughs> oh man. But uh, it's 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 great that you that you like you you play with your community like that. They must really really appreciate if you taking your time because I mean, like you said earlier, not a lot of actors play games and make themselves available. So, well, what's the um, the feedback from the community? Uh, it's a lot of fun, man. I actually was uh, contacted by a, a great outlet called Totally Game, and they just released a little short documentary feature. You know, they came over to my place in quarantine. We we I did a stream. And um, just did an interview with them and stuff like that, sharing my experience the last few months playing with the fans. And it, it's just great, man. Every, it's cool because they loved Alex. And that's, that's what you want. You know, you want to create a character that, that people love and that they, they appreciate and they like. It's really always flattering to see people running around Call of Duty in an Alex skin. Uh, but just <laughs> being able to connect with them that way, they've been nothing but great. You know, it ranges from like really excited to kind of like some people will go really quiet. You know, some people will kind of maybe cry a little bit and you know can i record this you know my friends are never going to believe me can i stream it too uh it's it's really really fun it's really really flattering and uh it's it's they're, they're nothing but great man it's just such a actors don't get to do what they love to do without the support of the fans and people watching at home or buying the games at home and playing the games at home so it's just it's always felt like an easy part of my job is to say hey like i want to know who you are i want to you know send gratitude to you you know if i if i post something and you take an hour and a half out of your day to watch that movie to buy that movie and then go one step further and say hey i really like the movie like i thought you did a good job like oh, well, i can find 10 seconds to say thank you I re that really means a lot to me so i think that has um always been important to me and twitch allows me to do it kind of in a more interactive long form way and uh it's it, we all have a blast and it's it's cool because we all know each other's names we all know each other's Usernames and in-game handles and, you know, stories, you know, some guys bring their kids, some people, you know, have their mom and dad watching. It's, it's just really fun, man. It's really, really been uh, an awesome experience on top of an already great filming experience of the game itself. And it seems like a lot of them are really appreciative here on the live chat on twitch.tv slash we are rogue matter. We're seeing a lot of them showing some love here in the chat yeah. for you. Man, they're throwing out their hashtags, their hats, their their hearts. They love to Emotes, see it. All of it. I'm, I'm like <laughs> trying to keep up. I'm just like, I know he's great. Yeah. Hi, like, hey, you. Hi, hey, you. And I'm just like, oh. I'm, like, oh yeah, I'm also alive. <laughs> they're amazing and they're incredibly supportive, man. It's no surprise that they're here too because they're, they're just some of the, the coolest people I've had a chance to meet this year. And I'm really, really uh, grateful for them all. So. Much love from Alex to everybody in the chat room. I appreciate you. That's awesome. And hopefully they can support us through this quick commercial break. We'll be right back. And we're back with Chad Michael Collins. You love to see him. Love to see him. <laughs> everybody in chat's like, there he is, my guy, my streamer. <laughs> love to see it. So uh, this part of the show is where we talk about what everyone has been playing. And Chad, I can kind of guess what you've been playing, but uh, let's talk about, I mean, maybe it's not just COD, maybe it's something else, but uh, what have you been playing? 
I'll tell you what, man, between COD and D and D, uh, that's been kind of my jam for months now. And, uh, I'm quite happy. I'm quite, quite pleased. My, my nerd tank is full. Nice. <laughs> it runneth over. Uh, yeah, I, um, so I actually pre-ordered the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 2 remaster. Uh, and when you pre-order it, you get uh, the demo of the first level, the warehouse level. Um, let me tell you, it is, it is all the Tony Hawking that like, nice. I, I wanted It's so smooth. I'm not a sports person. I don't know why I was, uh, I really liked Tony Hawk, maybe because everyone did every, you know, white kid around that, that time. Like, did you like it was the all soundtrack, about it. dude? Yeah, I mean, soundtrack's say, amazing. It, is the sky intact? <laughs> the sky is definitely intact. Um, it's yeah, so it's just like a quick two minute run. Um, but I probably still put in like an hour of playing that same two minutes over and over again. Uh, it feels super smooth. Uh, all the tricks are there. Uh, even though it's the Tony Hawk, you know, one level, um, they do have some of the other gameplay elements like reverts and manuals that came in later in, in the series. So and that Shrek. You, yeah. Um, so that. It feels it feels just as good. All the enhancements that they brought along the way now back to those original levels. Um, very excited. It's uh, also cool to see that they have not only the existing soundtrack and lineup of skaters, uh, but they actually have some current skaters that obviously weren't in those games um, to kind of keep it interesting, uh, and some more songs in the soundtrack as well. Um, on top of that, uh, I also did watch the Pretending I'm a Superman documentary. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's on. It, streaming pretty much everywhere now um it's fun seeing an insight of how that game was made and, and the kind of the culture that followed it and preceded it nice stuff that's, that's awesome too. nice casey yeah uh i actually bought uh a game that has i've been waiting since greg's recommendation control Ooh, i didn't know Ooh. this i'm oh, very but, intrigued now well it's on it's on it was on sale today that's uh, right and it, and it came out for you know, it, there's PC, it's on PC, so I, yeah. I got to get it. Um, control, the whole shtick of it is it's basically, it's, it's very Alan Wake because it's made by the same people who have made Alan Wake. But it combines all the fun stuff of TV shows like Warehouse 13 or Fringe um, or even the, uh, the online like whole, you know, fan fiction type yeah, thing, yeah. SCP. Yep. Uh, there's weird stuff in objects and weird places you travel to in this science fiction, like nightmare, Indiana Jones warehouse from hell. It's so uh, cool. And it's, it's beautiful looking. It's so much yeah. fun too. I have you, barely touched it and I'm oh so man. jazzed to just hop right back in. The, the best thing about it is what, doing what I call the anime hover right above everyone and using telekinesis <laughs> to get parts of the world and hurtling at, at your enemies like yeah. Akira. You're just like, I am the best. And then someone takes you out very quickly. It's a very difficult, <laughs> <laughs> very short lived so fantasy. Moment, that yeah. one shining moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really, it's really good though. Yeah. I like that one. Can't All right. Yeah. Jason. Uh, you guys know what game I'm playing again. It's Rust. Full Metal. Oh. <laughs> There's only two things I love in this world, Chad. It's Full Metal Alchemist, the anime, and Rust, the video game. I think <laughs> I've sunk too many hours into either of those and i i'm just so one-dimensional at this point it's uh it's terrifying <laughs> but no nah, rust uh rust wipes every week so it's a it's a survival game mm. uh you build your base you go on raid bases you you know get loot you you kill people that are running by if you hear noises you got to jump out and shoot um it's it's a game that really messes with your psyche at some point because like you can hear a helicopter in the sky and be like all right like this isn't a video game like you're you're getting groceries dude it's cool <laughs> uh, yeah but no so it's it's rust that changes every week and uh i think that's what's keeping me going in it you know it's like 1400 hours at this point so talk about you know seeing that timestamp of how much you know you've sunk into it kind of makes me sick a little bit but i'm still gonna keep playing so <laughs> I remember playing Rust in the early days and people yeah. were so paranoid because you would, you, would, you would drop in with your friends on this random island, right? You would start kind of like Minecraft, like gathering materials and like hitting trees and rocks and stuff like that. You would get to a point where you can build like a shack or a base and some other random like naked person would come out of the wilderness and be like, hey man, you friendly? And you'd be like, yeah, man, totally. Can I, what do you guys, <laughs> what do you, what do you guys got going on here? And you're like, legit. yeah, you're like, okay, yeah. You want to help gather some wood? He's like, yeah, I'll be right back. And it's just like, that guy is going to go get his friends. What? What? Friend alert! <laughs> <laughs> and and sure like, enough, a guy would come back. It's like, there's their base. They have resources. Get them. And you're like, ah! 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's terrifying, but that's that's the fun to it, you know, especially when somebody's online raiding you. You could wake up, right? The game, you know, may basically lasts for a week. You could wake up one morning and just see that all your stuff's gone. That's uh, the worst. Someone raided your base, yeah. Yeah, and Cause they, cause they, like, all, all, all your stuff is still there while you're offline. Yeah, this game's yeah. always happening, so you're kind of constantly thinking about it while you're working yeah. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've you're, 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 you're like, did, like did, did I put a code in the front door? Oh, crap yeah yeah did i seal the bunker oh god you know but like so they've incorporated different apps and stuff like that that you can connect to it now and it'll actually tell you if somebody's coming in and raiding you uh which is really difficult because if i'm in the middle of dinner with my girlfriend and stuff i'm like hey uh i gotta step away for a second she's like you're gonna go play rust aren't you like, you don't understand though they're gonna get my stuff <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, awesome. but uh, it's it's got me by it's got me by the, the balls at this point. So yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and and a game that's really got me is like I've been playing nothing but Warzone. Like like I said earlier, like my friends just even while I'm at work, I'm a regular nine to five. They're like, "Hey man, you're getting on tonight." I'm like, "You already know." What it is. And like we'll talk about like the new meta, like what's going on. Uh, Chad, have you tried the new uh, LMG that dropped? I dude, I just unlocked the Bruin, and uh, I'm trying to unlock the uh, the other LMG now because you know i unlocked it just for you know just in time for it to be less, less <laughs> just nerf. in time for the nerf yeah 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 so uh i plan on it i haven't I, what do you think of it uh so so far it's 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 pretty good like i dropped into plunder because that's a good way to test out a gun like a, like a new weapon because like you already have your loadout dropping into plunder so you can just start right. firing away so you drop into the map you're like okay i can kind of see how this works because you know it's different from multiplayer because you have like shields and stuff uh, but so far, like there are some different like loadouts for it. You can shoot really, really fast, and it's less effective. Or you can kind of chug, chug, chug. But right. uh, it's, it's 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 got a like, seventy five round like uh, a clip there, and uh, it, 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 I I don't know. Like, it's 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 too new. But for right now, it seems to be pretty good. But it's a new gun, so they're probably enticing people to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it would probably be like a nerf coming soon. But for right now, it's 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 looking pretty good. Uh, what's what, what's your your normal loadout in Warzone, by the way? When you drop Dude, in? this is what's funny is like I've been winging it for months, but I'm actually <laughs> so into the game right now that I'm actually reading recommended loadouts. Like I'm doing research. Like I have a scrap of paper here with all my the specs for recommended lo loadouts by like pro <laughs> players. <laughs> like, so my, my progress. Nice. Like you know, I completed it here for the M4 and everything else but i'm like i'm working towards leveling up guns so i can actually have proper loadouts to be competitive oh wow uh, in a world with no cheat codes the man has no. cheat sheets <laughs> <laughs> my list, man me and my list so oh, i don't know I'm, I'm a lot of people are telling me like get the ram a uh, seven up there and, and a few of the other ones too but uh i don't know i feel like i'm still learning a lot but i'm getting into it so much more that i'm actually learning trying to learn how to be a better player instead mm -hmm. of just going in there and winging it in this way and in, in going right to the gulag <laughs> it so it sucks when you hop in got your loadout and it's like dang it i just got my loadout out yeah. <laughs> it's uh, uh greg what have you been playing so i've been playing a game called the talos principle which has been recommended to me by a couple of my friends and um streamers that i super admire and appreciate um uh, i will say this i used to think i was good at playing puzzle games especially platformer pl puzzle games but not anymore uh <laughs> i realized i'm actually really dumb and i can't play them period no it, it's zelda never prepared you for this portal never prepared <laughs> playing portal with casey never prepared me for the level of, of difficulty all you did was die <laughs> well, guys, i wonder why uh it's a really cool game it, the puzzles are very very challenging for me chat's just sitting there like come on the thing with the thing i'm like don't you say another word uh but it's kind of cool it has that whole like what makes a person a person versus a robot that kind of old science fiction vibe which i've been really digging there's a a terminal that just kind of is a little sassy at you that's been a lot of fun to interact with and out of nowhere i'll go into these random levels and there'll just be another you play as an android there'll be another android just look, look like looking at you and then running off and then just disappear whoa i'm just like Freaky what the heck is what is what is this and then there's this voice that says he's the voice of god and there's this, all this stuff going on that i don't understand yet but i've only been five hours into it right now so i'm looking forward to diving back into it it's great it is wonderful it's it's just so much fun so that's what i've been doing awesome yeah. 
And uh, real quick, do you want me to do the, the last little yeah, bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we got we got we got time to keep. We got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to let everyone know what's free this week. If you're playing games, and you're like, man, I'm really tired of all these games. I have here's some free ones for you. If you have downloaded the Epic app, you have now have access to Hitman, the the new one, the new iteration. I don't know when it came out. The like reboot. Years, the reboot. Yep. And then Shadowrun Collection, which is amazing. The PlayStation Plus free games will be hitting on September 1st. And you're going to be getting PUBG and Street Fighter V if you have a PlayStation Plus uh, subscription active. And that's it. That's all you get. Awesome. That's enough free. That's four free games. What are you still looking for? That's, <laughs> that's it. And that's, that's it. all the time we have for this episode of the Button Smash Video Game Podcast. We'd like to thank Chad Michael Collins for hey. joining us. And Chad, thank before we that. sign off, uh, where can everybody find you? Uh, well, I stream. Uh, I stream on Twitch. It's uh, Twitch.tv slash Chad Michael Collins, and um, Instagram and Twitter Collins Chad M, and Facebook is Chad Michael Collins as well. So yeah, I'm, I always try to stay active on social media and, and interact with everybody that I can, you know, as I have the time. So it's a lot of fun. I hope we'll be doing another stream with the, the players soon. Awesome. And Chad, was there anything uh, coming up in the future you wanted to shout out, and you think people should look forward to? um not really man it's 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 been a, just a dark year you know this whole <laughs> yeah, year, yeah. Man, this whole year has been going dark uh <laughs> this whole year nice. a night vision goggle uh in this way so um yeah i had um i do a, an ongoing military action franchise movie franchise for sony called sniper and uh we just released one back in june called sniper assassin's end so that's out right now um it's in theaters in japan right now which is quite fun and it's awesome uh, yeah so you know just riding the call of duty wave and uh, seeing, seeing if I can be pleasantly surprised by some of the stuff that'll come up in season, you know, five or six and whatever else. And I'm you know, looking forward to the, uh, the learning more about the Cold War game too. But uh, the, that's it. You know, I'm eager to get back to work. It'll be in less streaming, but it'll be for a good reason. <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right, guys. It's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you, everyone who is here live on Twitch.tv slash We Are Rogue Matter. We do this podcast talking about video games every single Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And you can listen to us anywhere you listen to a podcast. We will see you guys later, or we will see you another time.